well anyone who's scared of the dark need not apply and what's scary is not only the dark but my face peering out of it in this red light but we're doing well we've been doing six and a half seven knots for the last four hours according to Asher and the wind has been pretty steady 18 to 22 knots it's always nice when you come back into the daylight so Asher took her turn from four o'clock until 8 a.m. and now we're both up in fact um, I'm just cooking breakfast Asher is keeping warm and slightly suffering from a dodgy stomach but last night was good speed was good all the way through the night sort of six seven knots sometimes more we had some pretty pokey gusts though I think yeah 38.6 was our maximum there we weren't expecting that that was a bit more than was in the forecast as is often the way but it was in the right direction and we were comfortable enough although quite a big sea coming down which rolled the boat over a few times but you know that's a passage for you rock and roll toss and turn make sure you hold on tight define your goals hold them dear send them love and light know your worth play your part every challenge is a test your perfect life is out there yours to manifest. Passage mode full flow. Mark is in bed downstairs and I'm here in the cockpit minding the ship. I'm also having catnaps because we are somewhere halfway between Iceland and Scotland. I have the AS alarm on, there is no traffic whatsoever around us. The wind is consistent on the beam, going between like 14 and 20 knots, so it's all good. Welcome back on board Altar of Down. We took a bit of a leap of faith on this passage, but right about now we're starting to see that it paid off. 8 o'clock in the evening and we're heading into our fourth and final night of this passage south. We're about 35 miles north of the north coast of Scotland. We've just turned Perkins on because the wind is dropping down as per the forecast. So we've got about 14 knots now, which is okay. But then it drops down to eight knots and the sails start banging around. So we need a bit of assistance to get this job done. It's definitely getting warmer the further south we go and we're getting excited about seeing land. Although I don't think we will until the morning because the darkness will hide it from view. Our last night at sea was wonderfully uneventful and Perkins gently purred along helping the sails get us towards our destination. And then out of the gloom, the glorious sight of Scotland appeared. Every sailor will tell you what a sight for sore eyes it is when you first spot land and that is so true. It's the conclusion of your time spent outside your comfort zone. And for Asher and I, a feeling of gratitude and contentment flows in as we approach what are now to us familiar waters. Just under four days at sea and Stornoway is appearing behind us. It's absolutely fantastic approach in this place. I first came here in 2017 and I said, I'll be back. I wasn't trying to sound like the Terminator, but every single time Asher and I have left this place since, we have said, we'll be back. And it feels so good to be approaching this port again. I know my traditional home waters are down south, but more and more Scotland feels like home waters to us and we can't wait to touch land and be in Stornoway again. The Atlantic north of Scotland can be a wild and inhospitable place, but all the anxiety of being at sea melts away when you turn the corner and head into the beautifully sheltered port of Stornoway. And as usual, we are extremely grateful to King Neptune for allowing us to pass. Here is our new home for the next few days, Echo 77. What an absolutely fantastic adventure around the Faroe Islands and Iceland. And the best thing, it ain't over yet. We've got two and a half months of cruising on the west coast of Scotland. How does it get any better than this? 
It's been three and a half months since we've been away from this lovely country and here we are back again in Stornoway. This whisky is far too big for an everyday whisky but it's not every day that you sail back to Scotland from Iceland. So well done to you Asha. Well done to you too. Cheers. Hello Scotland. Cheers. Well done also. Cheers. Cheer on the cake to be back on the west coast. Today we embarked on our first ever road trip around the Isle of Lewis. We picked up the car and headed north to the butt of Lewis. I don't know why the butt of Lewis is up the north, it sounds like it should be down south in the bottom, but it's not, it's at the top. And this is the butt of Lewis lighthouse. And we have picked this lighthouse out on the horizon with its flashes when we've headed down from the north over the last few years. And it's helped to guide us safely into the Hebridean Sea and then into the safe port of Stornoway. It's pretty cool to see it in the flesh and to see all the jagged rocks that it's sitting on top of and I can now see very clearly why you need to keep the hell away from this dangerous part of the coastline. But it's awesome to be here on a lovely sunny day. After some wonderful moments spent in the butt, we pulled out and headed to an awesome beach on the west coast of the Isle of Lewis. This beautiful white sandy beach is Uig Sands on the west coast. I've come fully equipped for a day at the beach. I've got my kites and I've also got my swimming shorts in a bag that Asher is carrying because I'm going swimming. I'm not sure about Asher, but I'm definitely going in. Looks like the Caribbean, but I think it's going to be a bit cold. It's the end of our road trip and we've waited a while today for the sun to come out to come to this special site. But the sun didn't come out, it's windy and it's a bit chilly. But here we are at the Standing Stones of Callanash. Our first Standing Stones site this year was the Ring of Brodgar in Orkney and here we are now at this one. Just like Brodgar, they don't really know what this was all about, but they do think it's 5,000 years old. The general consensus is that it's something to do with communication to God somewhere in the universe and apparently every 18.6 years the moon comes into a low sort of swoop along the mountains and appears to dance along the top of the stones and apparently that signifies a God joining us on this planet. Careful there Mark, you know you lost a subscriber for mentioning the word God, but I don't know how these things were built, maybe God does. But who is God? And who are you? And who am I? Could it be that we're one and the same? God knows. Or maybe you know. Or maybe I know. Oh no, I've just blown my own mind and probably lost another subscriber. We've been here for 11 days now and we're just starting to look at weather windows to leave and we always feel reluctant to leave. But today is Sunday and Sunday is still a holy day in Stornoway. Everything shuts down, peace and quiet descends, and we're gonna go for a lovely little walk in the forest. ago we met this cool guy Andy who watches us on YouTube. He lives just around the corner and has his boat here in Stornoway and every year that we return we catch up and yesterday we were having a cup of coffee on Altor and Andy told us that the Isle of Lewis is referred to as the thin place which means that the border between the spiritual realm and the physical one is not that much at all and we can kind of relate to that we feel that this place is very special. It's wonderful here. We love it. Indeed, we do love it here. It feels so wholesome, so natural, so beautiful. When I was a bit younger, I remember many times being in the car with my mum and dad, and we'd drive past a massive house somewhere, and they would say, oh look, another drugs baron. And I remember thinking, I'm sure not everyone's making their money out of drugs, you know. 
But as I've got older, as is the case with many of us, we have to admit that our parents knew a lot more than we gave them credit for. This place behind, Lewis Castle, spectacular that it is, was actually built by a guy called James Madison. He bought the whole of the Isle of Lewis in 1844 for £190,000. And where did he get his money from? The opium trade. Not only did he make his money from the opium trade, he also managed to convince the British Navy to go to war in what was the first opium war with China sometime around 1839 or something like that. China were resisting the influx of opium because they viewed it as bad for their people. James Matheson saw his fortune diminishing and so drummed up support from the British Navy to go and defeat them so they could flood the Chinese market with opium. So, Mum and Dad, I'm very sorry. The house behind was built by a drugs baron. You were right. Walking into the thick forest that surrounds the castle, we soon found ourselves seemingly lost in a damp, dank environment. And what can you possibly find here? Well, first of all, you'll find a Polish girl. And secondly, said Polish girl will be foraging for mushrooms. Look at this. First edible mushroom, that for sure edible, that I found today. In Polish it's called a mashlak. See, I would see that and go, it looks yellow and poisonous. Ah, oh, no. May I have your knife, please? Yes, you can. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, beautiful. Are these what you picked the other day? Yes. Well, I did eat them and I am still here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, I'm so delighted. Oh, yeah, deep joy. It is. Smells so good. Lucky me. Thank you so much, Stornoway. I so enjoyed to stay here. We both did. And as always, we will be back. Goodbye, Stornoway. I'll miss it. I know, it has a special draw for us, Stornoway, doesn't it? It's a lovely yeah. place. We feel pretty at home here. But, you know, it was nice to come back to UK waters. And now we can look forward to our next feet ashore mainland. Yeah, that's really exciting, actually. Hopefully, we'll have a nice sail across the midge <laughs> and into sky. So if you, like us, believe that thin places between the spiritual world and our world really do exist, then come to Stornoway on the wonderful Isle of Lewis and feel it for yourself. The Hebrides look so beautiful. Film that over there actually, that is lovely, look at it. You've heard me bang on about how much I love the west coast of Scotland many times. And spoiler alert, I'm probably not going to change any time soon. The Hebrides is a cruising ground all of its own, and one day we plan to do justice to it. It was so cool that we managed to get back down from Iceland when we did, because we're enjoying some late summer sailing in the Minch. Stornoway is 15 miles behind us, we've got the Shant Islands on the starboard side, and we're cruising a little slow, under five knots most of the time. There's nothing to complain about. It's absolutely beautiful out here. We've worked hard to keep Altor moving in a dying breeze. It's now seven or eight knots and the main and the boom are crashing around in the swell so Asher doesn't have any chance of sleeping so I think it's time to get a bit of diesel assistance for the last eight or nine miles up to and under the sky bridge. Good morning Isle of Skye and good morning mainland. 
The heavens opened last night shortly after we started motoring, which is why the mainsail is just dropped roughly in its bag and the boom is still out on the preventer. We cruised under the Isle of Skye bridge while it was still pitch black and grabbed a few hours sleep. It's now 7.30, the tide is going in the right direction for us to be flushed through one of my favourite gaps, the Kyles of Ray, and from then we will cruise down to the lovely port of Malague. It's so good to be back on the west coast of Scotland. The greenery, the trees, the heather and the smell, it's beautiful. It doesn't matter what the weather is doing, it can be bright sunshine or overcast like it is today. It doesn't take away the beauty, at least not for us. We're now doing about nine knots. I think we'll probably get to over 10 as we get squeezed through here. Lovely, lovely, flat, calm day. So no problems with any wind over tide scenarios. We can just slide straight through. There was a lot of action on the radio last night. A couple of lifeboats and a helicopter were involved in some kind of rescue. We didn't know what was going on other than there was a vessel aground. We came through this gap and just by sheer coincidence, I happened to notice the name of one of the vessels involved in the rescue was actually on the AIS screen. And it's the tug that was standing by to try and help this trawler that's driven itself hard onto the rocks. I do feel sorry for them. I, I hate to see any vessel in distress. The tides are getting higher for the next two days, so they need to work hard to get her off at high water, otherwise she could be on there for a few weeks until the next high tides come through. Out here, at sea, every day is a school day, but we like it like that. I struggled enough to get my ass to school when I was younger, and if I already knew what the lessons were going to be, I never would have shown up. The last time we came into Malague, it was pissing down. It was a very, very wet day. Asha just said to me, how gorgeous when the sun comes out. I think we're still enjoying this being further south because it might be late on in the year, but I can feel the warmth on my face and it's lovely. As is approaching Malague, a lovely, one of our favorites really, and also home to an awesome, awesome pizza restaurant and bakery. <laughs> so I say to you, C, you keep being my teacher and I'll keep showing up for school because I love what you teach me. Here to catch our lines in Malague Harbour, our friends Daniel and Catherine from Sailing Polaris. Last seen in Fuglafjord, the Faroe Islands, it's great to see them again. I don't want to sound like a fool, but when you part company and you have oceans to cross, a part of you wonders if you'll ever see each other again. But I guess that's what feeling alive and living your life to the fullest is all about. Thank you very much indeed for watching this episode of Adventure Now. Altor, out.